early evening at the base of the Omboroko Mountains in central Namibia. But while the inhabitants of the Okonjima Wildlife Reserve enjoy the sunset, at the clinic, there's an emergency. Okay. Eight days ago, cheetah cub Quattro was rescued after being hit by a car. X-rays revealed multiple fractures in his leg. But he survived major surgery and finally returned to Africa to begin a lengthy recovery process. Okay. I think he's obviously still a bit you know, traumatized, obviously. I mean, he's, he's, I'm sure his leg's hurting him. That's OK, baby. Three days ago, rescue and release officer Dave Houghton decided to provide Quattro with some space to move around. It's a decision he's now regretting. Okay. We put him in this slightly larger area here, and he was just so mobile. He was you know, trying to climb the gates and everything. And uh, you know, we're really worried that, that just that extra little bit of mobility has uh, he's damaged his legs, and, and it's a, it's a one-off thing. It's a one-chance you know, operation, and if he starts breaking bones and pulling the pins out and stuff, it's probably the only option would be to put him down. So. I'm a little bit worried. I mean, you know, I've come to change the bandage, um, and I'm hoping that everything, once the bandage is off, is still solid. It's, uh, it's fingers crossed. Okay. Quattro's been anaesthetized, and with the help of the foundation's director, Tristan Burma, Dave will have to remove the bandage to reveal the extent of any damage. He's been chewing here and mm. along the end. Here. Quattro's injuries were so severe that seven screws were needed to realign just one of his fractured bones. After all the hard work, a mishap at this crucial stage of his recovery would be heartbreaking. Mm. This is the moment of truth. Mm. Feels solid. Yeah, it does, though. Better look when I take this off. The wounds are not pussy. In fact, it looks actually really good, huh? Yeah. Carla's been stealing herself for bad news. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. It's really solid. It's all nicely healed. No. Not even septic. No. No, no nothing. swelling. Nothing. nothing. After quite a scare, Dave won't be taking any more chances. We're going to keep him in crates now. We're not going to let him in there, so he moves around. And I think um, things have already, you know, already started fusing together, and uh, he's got to go back for his follow-up X-ray. So, touch wood, it all stays like that. As the foundation's director, Tristan spends much of his time dealing with clients. To get hands-on with the cheetahs is a rare privilege. You know, these are, the, these are the things that I think, you know, so many people out there, you know, almost dream about having the opportunity to do. And for me, you know, it's also learning something new every day. So it is a great opportunity to be able to come and help. Nice leg. How does that feel? It looks sturdy. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be very happy to put a mirror in his crate. You <laughs> can look at it. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> see what he looks like. Very relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Been a whole day of worry. Quattro's follow up with the vets will be in three weeks. In the meantime, he'll be confined to quarters. If everything goes well, he can look forward to a possible release here on the reserve. This 40,000 acre site was designed to provide rescue cheetahs with a stepping stone to life back in the wild. Elsewhere in the reserve, other cheetahs are enjoying newfound freedom without the need for human care. 
The team aims to release 12 more onto the reserve in the coming weeks. Waiting in the wings, four-year-old male Charlie and his female companion, Trish. Trish, come. Charlie was rescued at just four months of age and has grown up with human company. But Trish was a year old when she arrived and she remains wary of people. Uh, Trish has always been a, a nervous cat ever since we've had her. She's got a little bit better, but uh, if you go in to, to try and find the pair of them, you'll more than likely 95% of the time find Charlie, but not Trish. She kind of hears you come in and just keeps it out of the way. Before the cheetahs can enter the reserve, Charlie needs dental surgery to repair a root canal. Dave is here along with Dr. Jose Ruiz to anaesthetize him before transferring him to the clinic where the rest of the veterinary team are waiting. He's decided to dart Trish as well so the two cheetahs can be released at the same time. The procedure will be stressful for both cats, but Dave is particularly worried about Trish. Well, Trish is uh, quite a special cheetah for me, really, because uh, she's named after my sister, who's, who's sponsored her. Well, every time I come up and see Trish and Charlie in here, I, it kind of reminds me that I must let, let her know how Trish here is doing. I can see me SMSing every day once, once uh, this Trish goes into the reserve. I'm sure she'll be worried and be texting me every five minutes as to how she's going. Both cheetahs have been anaesthetized before and will recognize the dart gun. Dave hopes to get them under before they become too stressed. Um, I'm going to do Trish first, because um, she's the more skittish of the, of the two. Dave has confined the cheetahs in their feeding area. He needs to get a decent shot into Trish's leg muscle but Trish seems to know what he's planning, and she won't make it easy. No, you can't lay like that, girl. She knows. Dave shoots, but the dart doesn't go in. OK, my girl, that's OK. Trish's instinct is to run, but with nowhere to go, she's already becoming stressed. Uh, bounced out. I don't know whether she got. I'm gonna have to give her some time now. No, I've got to. I've got to redart her, so she's she's gonna be even more switched on as to what's going on. And she, you know, she as soon as she sees me now, she's gonna start pacing, which is what I didn't really want. But stop. What can I do? Dave lines up again. But misses once more. I don't know whether it hit or did it just... I don't know. Cheetahs are unable to regulate their body temperature under anaesthetic, and Trish is already becoming hot. Darting her now is just too risky. No, she's just, I can't dart, can't try. I've two, first one bounced out, second one I don't even know if it hit her, but she's just pacing so much now, panting, I can't go for anymore. I can see me having a nervous breakdown by the end of the week. It's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not good for them, especially, but, you know, it does kind of get me stressed as well. Ay, ay, ay. Dave decides to turn his attention to Charlie. And thankfully, it's a direct hit. Okay, let's back off. Dave will return for Trish once she's had a chance to calm down. It's okay, my girl, it's okay. In the meantime, Charlie has an appointment with the dentist. Oh, you're a fat boy. You're a fat, 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 fat. Ah! 
At the Africat Foundation in central Namibia, four-year-old male cheetah Charlie has been anaesthetized. Okay, left upper. One wear. Two wear pulp exposure. Veterinary surgeon Dr. Herod Steenkamp has flown in from South Africa. Right then, the lower jaw. He's One, about two, to carry out four, dental four. surgery so Charlie can be released onto the Okanjima Wildlife Reserve after nearly four years in captivity. Okay, so in this cat, we're gonna do two root canals and quite a few extractions. The prognosis is not as good as we initially thought. We thought it was one or two um, root canals, but um, it looks like a little bit worse. So we're trying to sort it and um, hope he'll go out there and he'll have a, well, not a full set of teeth, but he'll have as many as he, he needs to, to be able to survive out there in the wild. Cheetahs use their canine teeth to maintain a choke hold on prey after a successful hunt. Sometimes they need to hold their grip for as long as 20 minutes to make a kill. So Herod needs to ensure that Charlie's teeth are in the best possible condition. And as you can see, as we're starting to pile in that canal, all that dirt that's coming out of there, that's basically food particles, sand, soil, bacteria, that is all staying inside the, the canal. Okay, so check one minute. Once the inside of the tooth has been cleaned out, it's filled, just like a human root canal. The whole thing is, is pretty graphic, and it, it, it does um, make one kind of shiver a bit. But, cruel to be kind. After nearly an hour, it's all over, and Charlie is all set to begin his new adventure in the reserve. Well, I think it went well with Charlie, and I'm quite confident that in years to come, when I look at Charlie again, he'll still have some sound teeth. So I'm quite pleased with how it went. When Charlie wakes up, he'll be reunited with his companion, Trish. The two will then be moved to a temporary enclosure before their release onto the 40,000-acre reserve in just a few days' time. Before the gates opened on this special place, the cats rescued by the Africat Foundation had to remain in captivity. Now the reserve is up and running, every cheetah has a second chance to return to the wild. But the process isn't without risk. Of all the cats released so far, Five-year-old male Cyclops has given the team the most sleepless nights. Cyclops has sight in only one eye. And when he was released, there were concerns that he might struggle to bring down prey. Events in the last 24 hours suggest otherwise. Dave and Carla have picked up a signal from Cyclops' radio collar on the western edge of the reserve. Here it is. <laughs> and when they find him, he's resting, his stomach full. What have you done with it? Oh, you're so full you can't move now. Huh? Yesterday, he was spotted on a kill. Big fat look at your tummy. And Dave and Carla want to find out exactly how it happened. Sure we. He's obviously very full. He's a clever boy, eh? Big, fat, clever boy. In a clearing a few yards from where Cyclops is resting, lays his prize. It's a young kudu, a perfect catch for a solitary cheetah. He just ambushed it. I don't know, what did he do? How he actually right, killed it. A kill of this size will ensure that Cyclops won't need to eat again for at least 48 hours. I was just looking for, uh, see if there's any puncture wounds here. Oh, there we go, on this side. He killed it right, he killed it the, the proper way by throttling it. Hasn't broken the skin on this side, but he has on this side here. 
In the wild, cheetahs will eat quickly and then move away from a kill to avoid conflict with other predators. After 18 months in captivity, Cyclops seems to have forgotten the rules. But it seems he's still capable of taking care of himself. The fact that he's done it on his own is, is great. He's managed to, uh, and with one eye, so, you know, you kind of look at him and think he hasn't got much going for him, but he actually has. He's, he's, he seems a bit street savvy, that guy, so, which is good. Dave and Carla took a gamble when they released Cyclops, but their faith in him has paid off. If he continues to do well, he'll soon be able to leave the reserve to go back into the wild. Yes, no, I'm, I'm very happy for him. I uh, was starting to have my da niggling doubts that this might not work out. And so this has just made my day, really. And from now on, I think he can only go from strength to strength. day on the Okunjima Reserve. And for two cheetahs, it's the start of an exciting new adventure. Well, Charlie looking interested already, I think. I think he's going to come out easily. She's going to be the problem. I think so. Time. After getting the all clear from the dentist, four-year-old Charlie is finally ready to be released into the reserve with his skittish companion, Trish. Come. She was eventually darted by Dave and given the all clear by medical staff. The two cats have spent the week in a holding enclosure adjoining the release site. Come. It's now time for them to begin fending for themselves. Come on. Oh, they're hungry. Come on. Come, you guys. You're going to get ready to go to the gate, Carl. I'm going to, I'm Come going on. to. Once the cheetahs leave their enclosure, their heads lower and their tails go down. After more than three years in captivity, they're nervous about leaving the safety of their enclosure. Trish, there Trish. She's a good girl. Trish, Trish, come. It's me that she's focusing on. Come, girl. Cheetahs are flighty animals and Charlie and Trish will run at the first sign of danger. While Carla's attention is focused on Trish, Charlie grabs his food and heads straight back in. Let her go and then I'll get him out. Yeah. No, you can't go in here, girl. Go that way, baby. Having secured her food, flighty Trish hightails it away from the area. No, that's not going to do it. We're going to have to chase him. Yeah. Charlie, come. Yep. Charlie will need some gentle encouragement to join her. No, that way. You need to go out with Trish, boy. There we go. A little bit further. There's my boy. There we go. Come, Charlie. There we go. There's a good boy. Good lad. Well done. Let's shut the gate this time. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, you are a one. Charlie has lived at the foundation since he was four months old and has no hunting experience. For the first few weeks, he'll be dependent on Trish if she decides to stay. As he enjoys his last free meal, Trish returns and the two are reunited. And I'm hoping that Trish will kind of stick by him for a at least a little bit, just to show him the ropes. You know, the other cheetahs out there have had no hunting experience, but they've got, they're in a group, um, and they're in a group of five, and there's a lot of support. Um, Charlie on his own will be an entirely different story, I think. It's not natural in the wild for a male and a female to stick together. So we'll, I mean, only, you know, we'll, we'll find out. We'll see what happens. <laughs> 